Hi, my name is John Bennett. I'm the Executive Director of Sierra Club of Canada, and this is the first in our series of activist chats. And I'm sitting here today with Janet Eaton from Wolfville, Nova Scotia, who is a volunteer campaigner for the Sierra Club, working on trade and corporate responsibility issues. So, Janet, I want you to want to start out by just getting to know you a little bit. Um, how did you end up in Wolfville, Nova Scotia? Moved back to Wolfville, Nova Scotia after being away many years. Uh, just because it would, seemed right to be back in uh, a more rural part of the country and uh, we had family there so uh, we okay. relocated there from Halifax and have been there now 15 years. Okay. And when did you first get involved with the Sierra Club? Uh, that was around the year 2000 when we started the Atlantic chapter and um, I knew Elizabeth May at the time and uh, she had encouraged me to get involved and. Uh, knowing that I was involved on the trade side. And so I had taken that focus within the club, whether at the Atlantic region or the national region, ever since. And, and what's drawn you to work on trade issues? Well, because um, for one thing, uh, in the 90s, I became uh, involved with the International Systems Institute out of California. And uh, that drew me to a greater understanding of of world views and then economic systems and general systems. And um, it was around that time, of course, that um, the globalization was becoming, was coming to the fore and free trade agreements and uh, privatization and deregulation, all of that. So um, I, I kind of saw that in the, within that framework of, uh, of a global system and then realized that there were implications for that system for the environment that really needed to be explored and, and exposed. Well, and so, so let's explore some. What, what do you think are the implications to the environment of globalizing trade? Um, of, of globalizing trade? Well, there's, uh, there, there are many implications. Uh, the one that's at the top of people's minds now often is the, the excess miles that are involved in trucking and, and flying and shipping goods around the world, and there's an environmental cost to that. There's also, um, an environment, there's a, a cost uh, and an implication for our legislation within the way uh, these free trade agreements are set up and uh, um, that allows uh, the corporate sector to challenge some of the laws that we've got in place to protect the environment and also laws that protect human rights and workers' rights. Are there any examples where because of free trade laws have been changed or laws have been ignored or laws have been repealed? Yes, there's been, uh, of all the challenges that come under the uh, investor clause of NAFTA, Chapter 11, uh, there's been 47 of them, most of those are against uh, environmental legislation. So there was one uh, classic case where um, an additive to gasoline was challenged and, uh, and um, that actually re resulted in the, the clawing back of that legislation. And there, there are other examples. Oh, wasn't it even worse than that? Didn't Canada actually end up having to pay the polluting company? Oh, yes. Well, that's the and other, that, I'm sorry, that is the <laughs> other side of it. Yeah, you, there's, you can lose the legislation, you, you pay a fine, and it's usually in the millions of dollars. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's something that needs to be addressed. And right now, um, there's a significant movement in Canada uh, to uh, renegotiate NAFTA, particularly that, that clause, that, that Chapter 11. There's also issues around water. Uh, water, as they say, hasn't been carved out of NAFTA, and so there's great concerns that uh, water could be exported in bulk, and then th there have been several cases where that has almost happened, but then there's been a kind of a pushback on that. And there's a huge issue around the energy clause of NAFTA, Chapter 6. And, um, and so this is all on the table now of the, of the activist community, some academics, uh, institutes are pushing very hard. There's tri-national initiatives to, to uh, work on this renegotiation. And in the United States, the most significant thing is that there's a trade act on the table, T-R-A-D-E, uh, Trade Reform, Accountability, uh, Employment, and the, so it's an acronym, Trade Act. There's over 100 Congress persons who have supported it. And and a lot of the um, NGO community are pushing for that. Our Sierra Club in the U.S. is part of that. We need to know about that in Canada because in, within that act, they're actually saying that uh, Chapter 11 of NAFTA hasn't worked. We can't have that anymore. I mean, there's so much evidence to that. Um, 
you know, agriculture, labor rights need to be at the ILO standards, the International Labor Organization. So that is what this Trade Act is, is going to do. So a lot of us in this country are pushing to say, let's get these kinds of things on the table here in Canada and let's have a look at it.